Washington Grown is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Agriculture's Specialty Crop Block Grant Program and the Washington Hospitality Association. Hi everyone, I'm Christy Gornson and welcome to Washington Grown. Russets and reds aren't the only potatoes in the game these days. You can find fingerlings, purple potatoes, heirloom potatoes on plates all across the country. In this episode, we're learning all about these specialty potatoes. We'll visit the Japanese restaurant Adana to cook a beautiful fingerling potatoes dish with Chef Shota Nakajima. Itadakimasu. 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 How do you start off growing potatoes? We'll visit Irish Eyes Garden Seeds Farm to see how consumer seed potatoes get started. Sometimes can plant these and get 50 times as much as you plant. Wow. And Tomas is hitting the streets with some tasty Parmesan potato bites. No words needed. <laughs> All this and much more today on Washington Grown. Ooh. Look at that! Good job! <laughs> oh, like look at that. those beautiful carrots! <laughs> gotta go fast! Hot diggity! How good is that one? Itadakimasu. We're visiting Adana, a Japanese restaurant nestled on Seattle's Capitol Hill. Here you can find a crave-worthy Japanese comfort food menu that merges owner and chef Shota Nakajima's heritage with his culinary training. Northwest Japanese cuisine, lightly inspired by my training in Japan, and a lot actually from the food that I ate growing up made by my mom. Really? So kind of a mixture of stuff and um, using a lot of local products. You know, in terms of like traditional Japanese for Seattle, uh, it's very different. Adana is unique for its always changing seasonal menu and specialty cocktails that always ensure you'll never have the same meal twice. Again, we change our menu monthly, so it's always kind of different and it's always fresh. I'll have farmers come like up with a truck and they'll just open their trunk and I'll go in with the flesh and I'll be like, okay, I'll get that, that, <laughs> that, that, and that. That's nice. And just we try to come up with dishes for the month and yeah, yeah. kind of figure it out. Super fresh and good ingredients. Each dish is elegantly plated, truly a work of art. Later in the show, Shota will be showing me how to make my very own masterpiece with some Washington grown fingerling potatoes. Look at how beautiful. You know, mine is not too bad. Growing specialty potatoes, how do you get started? Today I'm visiting Irish Eyes Garden Seeds Farm. From the outside, this looks like a typical potato farm, but farmer Greg Latoski doesn't grow potatoes to sell in the supermarket. He grows seed potatoes for at-home gardeners. Well, tell me about your farm and how you got started in all this. I was uh, had just finished uh, with a business that I had just sold. And really, I was taking some time and doing some gardening. We had a really large garden down in Sumner, Washington. Mm -hmm. so then we planted some potatoes for the first time. And my girls were in kindergarten. And every day, they loved to come home and dig potatoes. Oh, fun. It was like treasure in the ground. And just kind of fell in love with potatoes. Started doing some research on how to grow seed potatoes. And 27 years later, and we're growing 80 acres of specialty potatoes. Greg says they grow 20 different varieties of seed potatoes. And we've got to be real careful not to mix the varieties. Oh, okay. And that we have stakes at the beginning and the end of each rows, and you can see by the color differences. Um, yeah, just by looking at the greenery. Potatoes are very diverse, very, very pretty. And this one here Yukon is Yukon Gem, Gem which is uh, very interesting to organic growers because it is late blight resistant. Can Would we you? look at one? Sure. Yeah. And late blight is the, uh, the fungal disease that, that caused the potato famine. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of digging of potatoes at this time of year to see if they're large enough mm -hmm. to, uh, to get ready for harvest. And are these? Uh, no, this is no. actually a, a mid to late season potato. So this one here will you can see here it's still setting potatoes. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So this one's probably about at least three weeks away. Okay. Greg grows a large variety of colored potatoes, including purple, lavender, red, and yellow. 
So when the consumer, when people order your um, seeds, what, how, do you, how do you plant them at home? Well, the, uh, the seed potato will look very much like the potato that you'd purchase at the store. Okay. Um, it's just gone through a different type of growing practice. Mm -hmm. And when, when you get them at home, you're actually, the tubers are gonna look like just like the one you have in your hand there. Mm -hmm. And what you'd wanna do is put them in a warm area, mm -hmm. um, even in the direct sun. And as it starts to dehydrate a little bit, those little eyes around the potato mm -hmm. will start to swell and grow. Okay. And after you see those, then it's pretty easy to be able to cut the different seed pieces. Okay. And the cool thing about the potato is, when you plant that potato, you get the exact same thing back. If you could, uh, you know, tell the people of Washington, you know, what it's like to be a farmer, what would you say? We would just uh, really like the people to know that, you know, it's hard work, and uh, you know, hug a farmer. Okay. <laughs> Here you go, man. Thank you. <laughs> A little later on, Greg is going to show me the process of raising seed potatoes so that they're ready for the at-home gardener. Now I'm chatting with Chris Voigt of the Washington Potato Commission to learn about all the new and unique varieties of potatoes our state is growing. We're out in the beautiful potato field in central Washington, yes. of course, and talking about specialty potatoes. Right. So not just, not just the old russets. Right, you know, what russets are... <laughs> Great. I mean, yes. they're my go-to potato utility. Yeah. And actually, they're kind of an heirloom. They've been around like over 100 years. But there's some really cool, fun, exciting varieties to if you're interested in trying some new things. Yeah. There's some great specialty varieties and, for that. And all from Washington. All from Washington, yes. Not only uh, do we grow them here in Washington, we also breed them in Washington. Okay. There's a USDA facility in Prosser, Washington that uh -huh. breeds some great ones, and I'm going to show you some of those right now. Yeah, today. so why don't you do that right now? Let's let, take a look okay, at so what Okay, so let me show you some are. existing ones that are kind of fun. Like, I love this Purple Majesty. Okay. Look at, look at that color. Oh my gosh, look that's how beautiful. Look purple that color is. Yeah. If uh, red's not, if uh, purple's not your okay. deal, we get a little bit of pink well, action going beautiful. on. that's beautiful. And, and when you cook this one, does it stay? It'll still stay. Pink? It'll have that pink hue. So again, you'll have like pink mashed potatoes. Do these taste? They taste like a potato. Different at they, all? A or? little bit, yeah. So uh -huh. it'll be, uh, sometimes uh, like the purple's a little bit more of an earthy, kind of a nutty flavor, uh, but still very delicious. Chris said there are over 100 different varieties of potatoes grown in Washington with names such as Smiling Eyes Yellow Potato, the Russian Banana Fingerling Potato, the Jester Potato, and some that don't even have names yet. So are consumers getting more interested in specialty potatoes? Yeah, you know, potatoes, you know, we eat over like 110 pounds of potatoes, every man, woman, and child in this country. Wow. And so potato consumption had actually been on the decline, but okay. now we're starting to kind of see a gradual uptick. And I think a lot of it has to do with A, People are now realizing how nutritious potatoes they are. are. Really nutritious. But yet, there's some really cool, exciting new potatoes out there. So, what is the future of Washington potatoes? What do you see down the road? Well, I think we're going to start seeing more of this. We're going to see more exciting different varieties as yeah. consumers become more accustomed to it and don't freak out when they see a purple potato. What am I supposed to do with that? Yeah. And get some recipe ideas by coming to our website. Um, it'll be an opportunity to really um, expand markets with yeah. some of these new offerings. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's always great seeing you. Coming up, we're in the Adana kitchen making a fingerling potato dish that is almost too pretty to eat. Look at how beautiful. You know, mine is not too bad. Back at Adana, a cozy Capitol Hill Japanese restaurant where you'll find a new menu every month. The atmosphere is comfortable, but the menus can be adventurous. Owner and chef Shota Nakajima says he likes to keep on his toes when experimenting with cooking. I enjoy cooking with ingredients that I've never cooked with before. If I have it in front of me, it's like you, it's kind of a puzzle. It's like, okay, how do I make this taste good? Shoda knows the importance of incorporating local ingredients into his cooking. His hyper seasonal menus depend on it. I don't think you can beat the flavor of something that's very fresh. And us in like Washington, we're lucky enough that there's a bunch of farmers that can provide us with those fresh ingredients. Yeah, so what are we going to be making together? I got some fingerling potatoes from Central Washington okay. uh, that I can feed so they have this rich, rich 
potato flavor. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm pairing it with some pea puree, uh, morel mushrooms, and uh, yellow rockfish. So this is all very Northwest, isn't yeah. it? very Washington. Very, very Northwest. Yeah. So that's kind of the type of cuisine that I do. I do very like Northwest Japanese cuisine. That's awesome. So, so fingerling, Washington grown fingerling potatoes. These are delicious. And you're going to do something special with these. Yeah, I actually have a lot of confit from last night. Okay. And um, my favorite thing about confit is it really condenses the flavor and so it becomes very potato. -y. Shoda sends our confit fingerling potatoes to the oven and then starts to prep our rockfish. It smells really fresh. It was yeah. actually just caught yesterday. Wow. Just caught by a fisherman friend yeah. of mine. It's perfect That's for like Japanese cuisine. Gigantic. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice one. Shoda uses his knife to score the skin of our fish and then slices it into smaller portions, topping it off with a homemade kombu salt. Now our rockfish is ready for the pan and Shoda teaches me a special technique to get the perfect sear. Hold it down for a second and then slowly move it around a bit. If you have fun cooking, I think it ends up translating more to the food, more to the guests that come okay. in. And They're a great tool for you. Chopsticks, yeah, yeah. I do everything with chopsticks. Like, chopsticks are, they're my tongue, they're my like, cake tester, because you know, they're metal, right. metal tips, and they're my tweezers, so. I'm very Japanese, where like, if someone cooks like French fries for staff meal, I'll be eating uh, French fries with chopsticks. <laughs> That's possible. <laughs> we then start sauteing our peas and morels. My, my philosophy of cooking itself is like, if you have good fresh ingredients, you don't need to do too much to it. You right. just do simple, simple things, so yeah. then it just, it's gonna be delicious. Yeah. With our veggies charred and our fingerling potatoes ready, Shota begins to plate. Work your magic. Work the magic. He starts by spreading a homemade pea puree. Then he adds our components. The biggest flavor in the dish itself is uh, going to be the fingerling potatoes. Yeah. Because it has so much more flavor compared to everything else. As a finishing touch, Shota adds dehydrated soybeans and pea shoot tips. Voila. Voila. I decided to give it a shot and plate my own masterpiece. Not These plate. chopsticks like you are, but... <laughs> well, I'm going to use my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> you can work here, actually. Really? You yeah. You like... I think... <laughs> Yeah, I think it'll fit right in. <laughs> sure. Look at how beautiful. You know, mine is not too bad, but no, that's yours gorgeous. definitely has a little bit more of an artistic masterpiece. And one thing we <laughs> we have to say before we eat okay. is uh, hold it like this and go, itadakimasu. Itadakimasu. Yeah. It means, itadaku means receive. Itadaku. And mas is kind of like a polite way to say it. Just saying thank you for okay. being able to receive these things. Do it again now. So it's itadakimasu. Itadakimasu. Time to see if our work of art tastes as great as it looks. The potatoes are delicious. Yeah. The pea puree is amazing. Yeah, but you taste the potato, you taste the fish, you taste the peas, and you can like mix it together. And yeah, but it's all delicious on its own and delicious together. Woo! I love it. Thank you so much. Yeah, definitely. This was fun. To get the recipe for Adana's springtime dish with fingerling potatoes, head over to wagrown.com. More and more, you can find specialty potatoes, known as fingerlings, at your local grocery store. But are fingerling potatoes just a cute little vegetable that was harvested before it could grow up? It might surprise you to learn that fingerlings are a variety of potato, just like the Yukon Gold or Russet, which means they are fully grown when you see them at the market. They are prized for their thin skins, which don't require peeling, and their firm texture that stand up to various cooking methods. Nutritionally, fingerlings are similar to their bigger cousins, so they are a great source of vitamin B6, which is an essential nutrient that our cells use for over 100 different metabolic reactions. Vitamin C is also abundant in potatoes, which our body uses for wound healing and to limit damage to our cells. Fingerling potatoes are also rich in potassium, an electrolyte that is critical to keeping our heart happy. When it comes to growing potatoes, Washington grows more potatoes per acre than anywhere else in the world. And when you consider that every year, the average person will consume 112 pounds of potatoes, our state is literally helping to feed America and the world. Coming up, Tomas is on the street to see what people think of Skillet Food Truck's Parmesan potato bites. No words needed. <laughs> And we'll be in the second harvest kitchen making purple potato gnocchi. That one looks like a Viking ship. <laughs> not, not a gnocchi. <laughs> Let's 
go. Most people know I'm a meat and potatoes kind of guy. And when my friends here at Skillet made a potato I could eat in one bite, you can't go wrong. <laughs> right, right. So tell me about these fingerling potatoes you guys make in your food truck. The fingerling potatoes, we, we cut them one time just to make them bite size. Which then, we like, it's easy. Right, I, I toss them with olive oil, salt and pepper, and we roast them. When they come out of the oven, we put them on the truck, and right before service, we toss them with Parmesan cheese. It's so simple. Simple. Why fingerlings? Why'd you decide to go that route? They're locally sourced, can prepare them a hundred different ways. I can't wait to try them, and let's see what some other people think too, right? Right on. All right. Sounds good. All right, so Jenna, do you enjoy potatoes? I love them. What are some of your favorite ways to eat potatoes? Uh, French fries, I love baked potatoes. My favorite is with bacon. Ooh. Now, what are some favorite ways that you enjoy to eat potatoes? Not in the rain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or just potatoes and bacon fat. <laughs> Have you ever had fingerling potatoes before? I have. Do you enjoy them? They are so good. Have you guys had fingerling potatoes before? Yeah. No, no? and no. yeah, right? These are prepared by Skillet, really? and I'd love for you to try them and tell us what you think. No words needed. <laughs> no words needed. I like how they're crunchy on the outside, um, but still soft and warm on the inside. They're good. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. They're soft and like the outside of it's pretty crispy, so that's good. Good, so you would have these again then, right? Oh yeah. Awesome, yeah. good. Well, let's go have some bacon dipped potatoes. Yes, let's, let's go. go. <laughs> Earlier in the show, Greg Latoski from Irish Eyes Garden Seeds Farm showed me his potato field where he grows seed potatoes for consumers. Now he's taking me into his greenhouse to show me where the process all starts. And this is where the, the potato seed actually starts in the beginning. Okay. Uh, each spring around March, we get about 7,000 tissue culture plantlets from the University of Idaho, mm -hmm. which we then plant into one gallon pots. And then we grow them for a season in an insect protected uh, growing environment. Right now you can see it's very, it's very empty. Yeah. We just finished harvest oh, okay. at this time of year. And, and most of the potatoes are over in the cooler. So what would we have seen you, before. You, before you would have seen 7,700 black one gallon pots with one potato plant per pot, and, and they would have been about, about three and a half, four wow, feet so tall. This whole thing is full. Greg says after they harvest the potatoes in the greenhouse, they're stored until the following spring and then planted in their early generation farm in Cleella. Greg says they harvest and replant the potatoes four times over four years before the seeds are ready to be sold to consumers. It takes four years uh, because the tubers that come out of the greenhouse can are very small and they're very expensive. They're worth about $60 a pound and nice. nobody could afford to plant or to eat those. Yeah. So we grow them in our, our little nuclear plot up in Cleellum, which then they expand by about 10 to 12 fold. So then they get a little bit less expensive. Mm -hmm. Then we take those again and we plant them again and clay them. So now we'll get 10 or 12 times as many, yeah. which then reduces the cost as yeah. well. And really the fourth year is where it's economically feasible for people to afford to grow the potatoes. Next, Greg took me to his cooler to show me some of the first generation potatoes that were recently harvested from the greenhouse. Uh, these are all different types of potatoes here and they're all sacked up and counted so that we uh, can keep track of what, what our yield is mm -hmm. so that we know, kind of estimate what I'm gonna need in four years. And so these are very expensive. Yes, you are holding probably about $90 right there. Not gonna find that in your grocery store. <laughs> no, you won't. Uh, but these are very, very, very vigorous. You sometimes can plant these and get 50 times as much as you plant. Wow. Because they've never been in native soil. Yeah. They, they have no viruses that would reduce their yield. So these are about They're as happy clean potatoes. as you could possibly get for a potato for planting. Wow. While those first generation potatoes are expensive, they are actually perfect for people living in apartments or for those with small gardens because they can yield so many more potatoes in a smaller area versus Greg's fourth generation seeds. So these are all the These are all our types. different labels that we package uh, our products for when they go out to the garden mm -hmm. centers. Nooksack, what's that? <laughs> uh, Nooksack is actually a potato that was uh, specifically grown for Washington State. Oh, cool. And it is a russet that can handle the wet, cool, 
season that they have on the west side of the of Washington. Greg says they ship out up to 650,000 pounds of seed potatoes across the country every year. Where can people find well, your our, seeds? Well, our potatoes are available on our own website. We're, we also are now on Amazon, but you can also get them at your local garden centers all around the state of Washington. We probably have more than 200 garden centers just in the state of Washington that carry our potatoes, our garlics, our shallots, and our seeds. I'm here with my friend Kristen, and we are in the kitchen at Second Harvest Food Bank in Spokane. And this is our lovely teaching kitchen that we have the honor of working in. I love it here. It's such a nice facility. And I'm happy to be working with some potatoes. I see these are gorgeous. Yeah, aren't they beautiful? Yeah. Yeah, these are so these are purple potatoes, and they are just the deepest, most beautiful color. Love the color of these. And we're going to use them today to make gnocchi. So we're going to make. Purple Noki. Purple Noki. Awesome. Yeah, this is one of my one of my daughters. Her favorite color is purple. Yeah. And one of her favorite foods is Noki. So it's a win-win. It is a win-win. Yeah. Anyway, it's a great way to, sh to highlight their beautiful color. One of my favorite foods is Noki too. This is a win yeah. for everybody today. Oh, I, <laughs> I know, and I love these potatoes. And you know, I've got to recently kind of see all the different like specialty potatoes that are being grown in Washington. Ones that I've never even heard of. So many kinds. Or seen before. Mm -hmm. You know, like some that you cut it and they're purple, star like shape in the middle, or. There's so many different bright varieties. Bright yellow mm -hmm. and creamy on the inside when you cook. I mean, it's so cool. So I'm excited. That's why we're gonna mix it up today. Purple gnocchi. And use this, yeah, to make something unique. And okay. Fun. So we're just gonna start. We have a pound of these purple potatoes. And we're just gonna add them to our water and get them boiling okay. and just get them. Perfectly tender, go. fork tender. It'll take us about 10 minutes to get them okay. ready to go. Once our purple potatoes are soft, we start to peel off the skins. And then we're gonna use this potato ricer. Have you riced potatoes before? I have, I made gnocchi before with someone else. You did? Was it purple? It was not purple. Okay. <laughs> not purple. Yeah, the ricer is a great way to get the potatoes to small little pieces mm -hmm. without releasing too much of their starch because then they get really gummy. But if you don't have a ricer, you mm -hmm. could use like the fine, a fine grater okay. and just don't push too hard. You just want to delicately break okay. them into smaller pieces. This is such a beautiful color. After all the potatoes are peeled, Kristen slices them into smaller pieces so we can put them through the ricer. So I'll load them in and then you just turn the handle. When all of our potatoes are riced, we start to mix in salt, flour, and eggs. We can mix together. Okay. <laughs> Break up any of I those. See, I mean, this is fun for kids to help. It is. The hands-on things mm -hmm. I find are the ones that are the most fun to get my kids involved in. Especially when they look cool. Once the dough is mixed together, we knead it and cut it into sections to roll out. And we're gonna roll them into like like you're rolling a snake with Play-Doh. <laughs> oh, okay. You're gonna roll them into a cylinder that's like about three okay. quarters of an inch. Okay. Three quarters of an inch. This is my kid's favorite part. Yeah, this is fun. <laughs> it feels really cool. I like gnocchi because it's, you can put just about anything on it. Mm -hmm. You know, different sauces or nothing at all, or just olive oil butter or, and, or butter, yeah. We sprinkle some semolina flour on our rolled dough to prevent it from sticking, and then we cut the rolls into small sections. We stand our dumplings up and press down with a fork to create ridges. 20 minutes ago, these gnocchis, they were potatoes. They do. Here in the kitchen, I love it. the best. That one looks like a Viking ship. <laughs> not, not a gnocchi. <laughs> so the other cool thing about these is that we'll, um, we're going to let some sit out. Mm -hmm. And as they sit out, the purple that from the potatoes soaks into the flour we just added, and uh -huh. they just get uh -huh. to be a deeper and deeper purple. Oh, pretty. How long do they have to sit? So you can cook them right away. But if you want the purple to come out, mm -hmm. you should let them sit um, probably about four hours. Oh, OK. And then the purple will really Fun. be vibrant. OK. I think these look awesome, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> After our gnocchi sits for a few hours, it's time to start cooking. And then put it in the boiling water. And you'll watch, they sink down to the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as they float up, then they're, they're ready. 
So it really goes super quickly. Yeah. So we have some bowls here with some sauce. Yeah, we just have a nice, like an Alfredo sauce. Mm -hmm. It's really garlicky. Yeah. And like you said, it, like we could put anything with it. Anything. Once they float to the top, they're ready for us to try. And we're ready. Yay! Mm -hmm. I love it. Look at how pretty that is. Nothing but potato goodness. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> mm. They're not, it's not a heavy It's not super taste. heavy. Mm. They taste delicious. And you still get the earthy potato. Mm-hmm. Oh. Those are so good. Thank you. We make a good gnocchi team. Are you gonna make some more? <laughs> <laughs> Do I need to You're now? hold your bowl while you make some more? <laughs> to get Kristen's purple potato gnocchi recipe, head over to wagrown.com. No matter the variety, you can guarantee any potato that's grown in Washington is high quality and delicious. That's it for this episode of Washington Grown. Thanks for watching. <laughs>